call the meeting to order. We have the motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sackle. Resolve that the agenda for the June 5th the regular meeting council be received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sackle. Resolve the minutes of the July 15th. 2018 regular meeting council be adopted as received. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, under correspondence, uh, the first one is from the AMM regarding the uh, district meeting, basically for information. Everything is all set to go for that, Julie? Yeah. Okay. Any comments from counselors? No. The next one is the letter uh, to the AMM fr from the Manitoba Community Newspapers Association. My understanding is that that legislation has been changed to the request that they were asking for. Yeah, that's what that letter is stating yeah. is from the minister. Okay. So there's, uh, should we be replying, Your Worship, to the uh, Foreign Times that you think it's changed? Because that's a big concern for them. The letter says it has been changed. And uh, Mr. Gore is asking us to do what then? Uh, I read he's still under reply from us on a letter of support. It's further down on the agenda. Yeah, um, Brian sent to me an email regarding that legislation. Well, we can send him an email with a copy of the minister's letter. Yeah. Okay. And if he wants further information, please ask us again. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the next one is kind of an interesting letter. The community and ranger company asking for a thing set up in Swan River. I think it's good to at least hear them out. Sure. Yeah. So we'll notify them. Do you want me to arrange a delegation? Sure. Next is for the rodeo parade. Looking for somebody to be in the rodeo parade. I guess that's me. Isn't it? Okay, I can respond. The next one is floats. I guess we'll have to decide sometime before then when the town's going to float in. <laughs> <laughs> well, the last couple of years we've been back with communities in blue, so if that's okay with everybody, we'll just do that again. Sure. Sure. Who wants to ride it? Let me know. It's quite dangerous. It can be, yes. <clears throat> okay, the next one is uh, from New Era A regarding tax relief. Any comments from council? This would be something different for us. I think uh, the fact that the land was sold to them at a at a reasonable rate is, I, in my opinion, I can't see that we're going to give them any kind of tax incentive. Regarding the uh, incentive, is there anything to in the incentive plan to buying existing buildings? Because they did buy some buildings on the second property. Is there a part of that incentive to defray taxes with that also? Program. Just new building. New building and expansion of the existing building. You got to add on to the existing building. So existing building, even the one that they just bought and they wanted to add on to it, there would be a tax relief or a benefit to them for their addition, their add on. As far as them buying a building across the road like they have. Unfortunately, there's there's nothing in our incentive, and I don't personally believe that we can give them anything. It's to spur on new development and expansion. I, I applaud them for buying the piece across the road, and I have no doubt that they're going to do a marvelous job. Uh, they came to us and requested land. We sold them at a reduced rate below the assessment, and I think we've given them a fairly good break already. That's just my opinion. I think it's, uh, I have no problem with what you said, but I think we may want to readdress the incentive plan as it sits. Because if a guy buys a, a brand new building in a community or a brand new house in a building, 
and he's not eligible for any tax incentives. How, how is that, that commercial building really different than a house somebody else bought? The thing about that, Councillor White, is that then we could be giving the incentive twice. We could be giving the incentive when the building is built, and then okay. we could be giving the incentive again if that person moves out and somebody else moves in. Yeah, yeah I appreciate that for sure. But uh, I suspect in this case, I could be wrong, that there's been no incentive given to that building because of its age before the uh, incentives came in. But that would be a, a tough thing to decipher. So that if you use the houses, and you know many houses didn't get the incentive, and if somebody buys a new house, as you said, like a new building, how how do we determine who got the incentive and who didn't get the incentive, and now who gets it and who doesn't get it? Like how far back do we go? I built my house in 1977. Perhaps a note to that effect uh, to New Era's explaining uh, the dilemma as we see it. And if any other way we can help, feel free to touch base with us again. Any other comments? Okay, we're to new business. Uh, Valley North 4H Area Council request for picnic tables. We have a motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sackle. Resolve that the town provides some picnic tables for. Valley North 4 H Council's 4 H show held June 16th at the Ag Society ground. Uh, further be it resolved transportation of tables is the responsibility of Valley North 4 H Area Council. Councillor Sackle. Is it just me or are we having more requests than ever? I, I don't know. It just seems like every council meeting, like I think there's two or three on here right now. Uh, there's one for the Triangle Park once, I believe, picnic tables for their picnic. There's this 4-H event. I love 4-H. I think it's great. It's educational. It's good for kids, and I'll probably vote in favor of this one because it's, it's educational. Uh, but, man, we got... I don't know where we start and where we stop again. It seems like we cut it off, and now we brought it back. And I don't know. More, I think circles. this is where, like, where we kick the can before us. A formal policy has to be drawn out to sort of where we stand so that we're not dealing with this... We, got, we decide who or what the parameters are once, and then administration can follow the policy. But sell the tables. Make it somebody else's heavy. Mm -hmm. I agree. Counts are freezing. Mm -hmm. I think the policy we have is for tables and chairs, not picnic tables. Well, that might fall under the tables and chairs because there's a rental fee for them too. So. Is that something with the egg society? So I sell the exercise for a dollar. Yeah. Let them deal with it. They can decide who's worthy or not because we've tried and tried to have a policy and we can't stick to it. I'm sure Lobster Fest is coming around the corner and I believe they will be asking for the picnic tables for their tent outside. Don't they even get them or do they have something else? Like it just, there's always an event and I think it's great. I love the events. I think they're they're all great but it's and then we get we get shortfalls on our on our income for our tables because we keep donating them. So either we sell them or donate them one last time. Or I think the good thing now is that our chief financial officer is keeping track of the number of times we give them to different organizations and the amount of money that will cost them. So at the end of the day, we we'll know how much it's. That's a little consolation. Because either we, I don't know, I think either we open it up and let everybody have them at, at no charge until they're destroyed and then we don't fix them anymore, or like you say, we sell them for a dollar and let the next organization figure out who they're going to rent them to, who they're going to give them to. If they take them. Maybe some of the lines probably is quite active. Okay. And then where do you put them? Do you put can, them up? can they still stay at the arena? Do we, do we take an inventory, put a tender out in the paper? Let's do that. Town of Swan River is getting... I have no problem with them still staying at the area, just as long as somebody else has a deal with... I mean, this is it's a tiny amount of money we're talking, but like you say, eventually there will be no money to pay for them once they're all destroyed. We'll have a flat rate and stick to it. <laughs> stick Dwayne, to it. Dwayne, or Councillor White, how many times have you voted to stick to the policy? More than I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> so 
where is that a consensus and we'll do an inventory of them and see who might be interested in buying them to start. I'm probably doing the inventory just for the different tables. Pick the tables on the other tables. For, the ta for all the tables and chairs. The whole kit and caboodle. Like normally the picnic tables just sit in storage. Outside. There's no outside. 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 Yeah, all of it. All, all of the tables, tables and chairs? chairs? Well, not the ones at the hall or anything. No, what's the, the arena? Do you know how many beautiful big black chairs that were just purchased there? And all the tables that are in there? I don't agree, sorry. Picnic tables I can see, but not the tables and chairs. Because we use them. We use them through the... Then we'll ask for a... Through the uh, egg society. Yeah, then we'll ask to use them for free from whoever they belong to. For what? Whatever, what, whatever we need, need them for. Which is... Oh, I don't know what you say we need them. We need them as in the egg society. Right, right. well, we, we're not the egg society board here at this table. We're the Town of Well, River. I'm just saying that we need them there. Well, then the egg society... If you can sell them to them. somebody else, where are they going to go? Then they can... Whoever owns them, the egg society can ask to use them. Give them the egg society. I mean, it, it just looks bad. We can't stick to this policy. Public watches this. What, what other policies are we not sticking to? They, they see how loosey goosey we are with this. They're just tables and chairs. Anyway, carry on. Okay, all in favor of the resolution? What was it? <laughs> the let the. Uh, 4H use the, the, the picnic tables. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. The next one moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sacco. As all the town of Sonora provides six picnic tables for the Fireballs Bocce Club for its inaugural park on Region Bocce Tournament held in the Legion Park June 2nd as requested. So that's over and done. So that, that was the one that we, I sent the email out. Okay. Doing a so resolution for consistency. So that makes no. We could defeat that one. Yeah. <laughs> Which is not consistent about you, what we do with if this. If you could vote on the resolution, that would be great. So then we have an actual. Did they actually resolution. use them? Because they can't. Oh, they did, I think. Did no, because they, they moved to some. They moved to Bev Beach Farm. Oh, okay. So they so, didn't use them at all. Well, the maybe they brought there. them there. I don't know. All in favor? Three. Motion moved by Councilor White, second by Councilor Sacco, resolved the town provide four picnic tables for the Angle Triangle Triangle Park picnic on June 11th. And we resolved the transportation of the tables from uh, the Centennial Arena is the responsibility of the organizers of the picnic. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Did you vote for it? Did yeah, I voted for it. Okay, you know that. <laughs> Okay, MCA Manitoba Community Newspapers letter, uh, we talked about that briefly, and we'll have a response to Mr. Gilroy. Okay. What is their response? The minister's letter. The minister's, There's a good minister's letter, but the, the legislation has been withdrawn. Oh. Okay, Superintendent Works Report, Derek. How is the well digging going? What's the prognosis there? Uh, the drillers finished after eight days of drilling. So the well's installed. We did uh, we did get a refusal, as I state, uh, on the info there. We have a well with casing inside it right now. It's 85 feet deep. So I'm just getting prices on what it'll cost to develop that is basically a fourth spare well. But I'll just bring those costs to council and we can decide whether we want to put casing and a screen down there and we can cap it or we can run a discharge line and have an actual working fourth well on spare. <clears throat> so they refused to drill any further on that one? Yep. So, but they hit water? Hit water at 36 feet, yep. So, 
all the water they hit is, is good water? Yeah, yeah. And so when they, they had to, uh, I was three days into drilling, they approached us and they were ready to, they were ready to leave. And uh, they were basically pulling the plug, which our option would have been going back to freezes for a quarter million dollars. And they, uh, they basically wanted to renegotiate their contract to finish. And uh, I did approve them to stay for, the only reason they stayed and finished was on $40,000. So I did uh, approve that and tell them to stay in Swan River, and they did finish five days later. So when they bid <coughs> on this, did they not ask, is there no geological data to know what they're up against? Because obviously they're way, they, they thought they could do it in one day, and it took them eight. Yeah, uh, the, the big issue was the casing size, and how porous the material was after 80 feet. So it was almost like going through a... Did, did we not have any data from the previous wells we had drilled about what the conditions were like? We did, and it, it did show that, but unlike on, we even had a test drill using a mud rig, and the mud rig stopped completely at 78 feet. That's basically where the riverbed started. So it's like, a, it was 20 feet of two to four inch rocks and so they use air pressure to bring everything back up right drilling and it was so porous that pressure just dispersed so they they had to get twice as much air to bring everything back up the well but they were they were frustrated and they like i say for a job that they expected to take 10 hours we stayed eight days so what you're saying is that they dug two holes Yes. And one is at a hundred and some feet, is this one that's going to go into production? But they, we have a backup or whatever potential backup now at 80 some feet? 85 feet, yeah. So we basically got two holes in the ground. We got like two holes for them. So the, the second smaller, can we just cap it off and not put pump in a, down there for right now? Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm getting prices for is to get, to get a casing to lead down there, a screen, and then we, we would cap it. And then we would get a price on what it would cost to add a discharge line and hook it into our our uh, main distribution lines. Yeah, but the case I think mean, like that's going to be very minimal compared to what it costs to redrill a well. If need be. <clears throat> so when you look at the end product, it's cheap. I mean, we've got two holes for the division dollar. Yeah. At an average estimated price of two hundred thousand dollars for a well, we got two for one hundred and sixty. I think you made the right choice. Get the job done in the end for a lesser amount. The uh, replacement of the tree grates. How's that going? Uh, it's it's just timing now. We've got a whole bunch of water and sewer digs to get done first with the guys who aren't crack sealing. So as soon as those are complete, then they can we'll have a crew to take those tree grades out. Uh, second question: Have you had any opportunity, any luck, contacting the CN people yet? No, no. I encourage you to consider that. No, I I have, and they were like right now they're supposed to contact us with their public works people. So we just go, I can't get a hold of the Manitoba head of public works person, so I'm going back to the, re, like the national public inquiries person. Yeah. I was given a name of Alec Husak. Would be the local guy who might be in charge of that. Could he help us somehow? I have his contact, yeah, he's the... Local guy in charge of CN Rail fixing up culverts. I can see if he's been in touch with yeah, I'll, I'll give you his number later on today. Thank you. Any other questions to Derek? Okay, we have the motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. Resolve the Superintendent Works Report be received. Discussion? All in favor? Okay. Okay, Council has the uh, Taylor School Radar Speed Reports. Any comments on that? Not. We have the motion by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. 
for the Lola Taylor School radar speed sign reports from March and April 2018 be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. The next item is the SRSS radar speed sign report. The motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen, resolved that the SRSS radar speed sign report uh, for April of 2018 be received. Discussion? I'm glad to see we got this second one working finally. Um, do we send these reports to the OCMP as well? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. All in favor? Well, just a comment, I haven't had it for discussion. I notice the average speed in the high school area is five kilometers higher than Taylor. That's interesting. Taylor's average speed is 30, what we want it to be, with the odd infraction. The high school one is 35. 7,000 evaluations. Interesting. Okay, we have the fire department report. Any questions to Julie on the fire department report? We have the motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Resolve a fire department report from May 2018 be received. Discussion? All in favor? All in favor. We also have the handy van report from May. Motion moved by Councillor White, second by Council Friesen, resolved that the handy van report from May 2018 be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Okay, you have the management minute meetings from May 24th and May 31st. Any questions to Julie or Derek on them? to comment uh, at the LIDAR, LIDAR presentation last night, they talked about these guys who do the sending radar laser to the ground and they can to within one centimeter to detect changes in elevation for water flow. And they're meeting today with the uh, Conservation District people and uh, I'm not sure how that would help us in any water flow issues that we have, but that number is certainly valid. Councillor Delorier. I see in the uh, management meeting minutes from May 31st in Patty's portion, they're going to be the coal wants to push, put their fish tank in the pool. Is that going ahead or? No, it was just an inquiry. Inquiry? Yeah. Okay, because I'd just be worried that's another thing to have to look after. I don't know if she, we need to. Her initial thought was they really didn't have anywhere mm -hmm. that they would be able to put it. But I haven't it's talked to It's quite a them. large fish tank, quite it is, a large yeah. amount of fish. Any other questions? Okay, council member reports. Councillor Sackle. Uh, not too much to report. I was last term I had a rise meeting. Uh, I guess just a little over a week ago. Kind of interesting, I guess. I was told that Swan Valley West approved the rise budget this year. I learned that they approved half the rise budget this year, and see where it goes. I guess before they decide if they're going to pay the other half. So I'm, I'm not exactly sure where that will stand or how it will go or where it will lead to. Uh, I know they are really pushing for RISE working on rural water. Um, there's no programs for rural water right now, so really there's nothing for them to work on. Uh, they want to know possibly, if, I guess, who's interested in rural water, which RISE is more concerned because you know everybody's interested in rural water, but at what expense is it going to be? A little bit pessimistic, I guess, on it, but uh, they really don't want to see the tourism thing carry on. One counselor suggested that we still work on tourism, but maybe not report that we're working on tourism. So, what? That's the type of stuff that we deal with, I guess. So, uh, 
I don't know if it'll carry on for a full year or not. It, it, it's, it's hard. It, it seems a little bit dysfunctional, and I believe it is. I'm the chair of that board. I'm disappointed to say that. You know, we had a mandate, and we were, we're going to not follow through with it. It was, you know, we picked doctor recruitment at one time, and, you know, we followed it through till it was done. And we moved on to tourism, and we're, like, close to the finish line, and now we're supposed to stop. So I'm a, I guess I'm a little disheartened when you invest everything into it, and then you're told to stop, but not stop. So I, I don't know. It's a little bit confusing, but I guess that's what I have to report on that. You're still on. I'm oh, sorry, that's, okay. that's it for okay. me. Councilor Friesen. Uh, last night, uh, I guess we all attended the G5, almost all of us. And it was uh, quite interesting. Supper was lovely. And uh, last Thursday, we went to the SBRSS new trades building. And um, the school board was there and we had lots of speakers. Uh, it was a very interesting evening. Um, last Friday, the settlement services had a potluck supper at the United Church, and it was 30 people attended. And um, they had a silver collection there, which uh, went towards Folk Fest, which will be not this weekend, but next. And this weekend is the high school rodeo. So, that's all. Thanks. Councilor White. Pretty busy. Uh, March the 16th, we had a, a, a transitional home meeting and they're, they're looking at fundraising. We're talking about petitions, and uh, at the moment, it appears the provincial government is looking at new mental health initiatives, which may have some opportunity for those members of that group to access funds. And they went to the CMHA to the HARM meeting, with HARM stands for Heal, Empower, Learn, and Prevent. They do a lot of work with uh, drug addicts and trying to get them to see the light. And they're working, looking, doing more active and working with the schools and other community groups. And I was blessed uh, to go to Gord Cowan and Ray Atkinson's uh, birthday parties where the community was very active in. And they were great community people, so I compliment those two men for the work they've done. May the 25th, we went to Brandon for the PMH meeting. And the transition houses came up again, and uh, there's some of them in Brandon. We're trying to see how they function there, and yet they can't function here, where the money still appear to be available. Talked about our CT scan proposal. We went down on a tour of the brand new MRI, which was very interesting, and the uh, Dr. Gauthier is in charge of that. Got us a tour, and uh, depending on the length of time you're in that thing, they can be very, very inexpensive to run, like $20 for 20 minutes, whatever and the longer it takes, the longer it costs. And then uh, the 31st, I went to the uh, Swan Valley Interagency and the Community of Care meeting. And I guess the bottom line is that uh, they try to decide what the community needs most, and uh, they can communicate within all the agencies and build on one another's strengths. And they're, at the moment, one of the priorities are working with students and other social groups. Uh, I think it's important to acknowledge that uh, Carol Hunter, who's deceased, was recognized as one of the key people in making all of that happen. And they want to do something special for her in the near future, so uh, accolades to Carol. And then uh, on the 31st, I missed the school one, but we were up at uh, Wellman Lake with uh, a retained recruit activity. We had two of our local doctors, Dr. Burnside and Dr. Gendy, three medical students, of which I can remember none of their names, and three or four support staff from the hospital system. And I think retained has become a a priority for us now, where we've got a good number, we certainly need more, and we're looking at doing to retaining. The G5, we mentioned already, was uh, wonderful, and uh, I don't know if it's right or not, at some time I'd like to get them, how much would it cost, Mr. Poole, to get water to spruce products lumber? Just throw that idea out to you. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Moore. Um, last Thursday, I was with Councillor White with the uh, the existing doctors and some first-year med students uh, from the fishing up at Wellman Lake. Uh, they all had a good time, um, and they were really excited uh, that the uh, you know, worship toured them around the town, that they all excited that the mayor was chauffeuring them around, and they got to 
two or different areas. So um, I think uh, the community is doing very well at promoting the community to uh, potential future doctors and highlighting to the existing ones that what we have to offer them and keep them within the community. So um, good job to the, everybody that makes that little uh, week up to the first year med students uh, a success because it sounds like we um, definitely are a highlight when they go back to compare notes with the rest of the students that they got there. So, um, And then last night had the G5 meeting where we had a presentation from Vantage Manitoba on LIDAR, that's like depth, depth uh, topography readings for drainage, whatever you want to use it for, for farming, municipal uses and all that stuff. And presentation by Swan Valley School Division regarding uh, daycare funding and uh, weed control officer potentially discussion um, more or less for the rural municipalities and uh, discussion to uh, get on board or have discussions regarding the proposed municipal uh, or not municipal provincial riding boundary changes which uh, um, I think general consensus was that it's a, a bad thing for the Swan Valley so just a point, if I could, Your Worship. Uh, publicly thank uh, Councilor Morio, picking the food up, cutting the onions, all the little stuff that has to be done, setting the table, making sure everyone is looked after, cooking the food, cleaning up, doing the dishes, hauling the garbage. It takes time, it takes somebody to do it, and I want to thank you publicly, sir. You're thank welcome. You. Councilor Deloria. Um, before I give my report, just uh, I have one more question on the uh, May 31st management meeting minutes. I see we're sending a letter to Revenue Canada to, to uh, lose our, our uh, charitable status at the hall or for the old hall board. Is there any, has that letter gone out? I'll have to check those too. Is there any way we can just keep it kind of dormant? Because I mean, we had we had inherited charitable status when we took over the old brick and wellness uh, uh, board and we closed that down and now we kind of regret it. But uh, so I'm wondering if we, can, if we have it, it's a hard thing to get. We never know what kind of circumstance will come up in the future that maybe us or some other offshoot might but might need or might, might be able to use it. I can ask them about that. Yeah, just to keep it dormant. I think you have to submit a financial report. Yeah, there might be some, some sort of stuff that we have okay. to keep up. But does it matter? Yeah, if you, can, if you can investigate, and, like I, I, I don't have anything in mind, but I just know with the with the recreation charitable status, we kind of regret not having it now. Um, I uh, just wanted to give a, a congratulations to the to the school division on their 50th anniversary of uh, providing excellent education in the valley. I went to their. Uh, function on last Thursday, I guess it was, and that was really well done. And the, the video, I hope you guys all take time to, they're going to put it on YouTube, but it was like a, it was like professionally made, like, and it went through so much good history of, of the, you know, especially for someone who wasn't, wasn't around when all that went on, and, and even when they built the administration building, there were sit-ins and protests, with placards, stuff, stuff you don't see around Swan River nowadays for sure, but it, it was, uh, yeah. It was just a really well done video, well put together. It looked it looked professionally done. So, um, and the the whole evening was well done. And I guess it just reflects on on what they've done for the last 50 years. So, um, and last night at the G7, uh, it was a it was you know some or, oh, yes G5 now. Sorry, thanks, Councillor. But uh, sometimes they can. Sometimes I question their value. They're, they're always good and, and they're, you always come away with some, but last night's was really good as far as the, the discussion between the municipality. It got a little heated at a couple of points, but I think that actually brings us closer together as municipalities if we're, if we're able to talk frankly with one another and, and, and share with one another. So, you know, it was it was excellent night last night. Um, only other thing I wanted to touch on was the uh, Boundary Commission released their preliminary report, report for the uh, for the change to provincial boundaries for the next uh, election, and I am upset about this. It 
you know what, it didn't matter which party was in power, when, when Rodan Wojciech was our MLA, when Ron Kostichin was our MLA, and now when Rick Wojciech is our MLA, we've had great service having MLA locally. Now with us being part of Dauphin, or the proposed is, is for us to be part of Dauphin, I have great fears about this. We'll be playing second fiddle to Dauphin just like we did for 15 years with, with the uh, with the healthcare, where it's it's not going to be good, um, and I'll be bringing a resolution forward just to give everybody a fair warning. I'll be bringing a resolution forward to, to the, for the town to show its uh, extreme displeasure and for the town to send a representative to the September 13th hearing in Dauphin when the uh, Boundaries Commission uh, meets there to get public input. Because this is bad news for the town of Swan River. It's bad news for the Swan River Valley. The, the, our, our constituency will end just north of Bozeman. That's going to leave out Birch River, Mafeking, all parts and pieces that we consider valley, that we consider us as, as, as people of the valley. And for them to be cut off and have to deal with a separate MLA, you know, the consistency just won't be there. So, you know, I'm going to be ranting a little bit about this, but it's something I feel very strongly about that the town should be, uh, should be, uh, take a position on this and, uh, and voice their displeasure. So, um, what and the school board last night, remember she mentioned the school board? Well, that'll be up to them. Yes. Yeah. They'll... But it's just another. Oh, it, exa issue. exactly. It's, uh, it's not going to be good. So people here are used to having their MLA have, you know, we may not, our MLA may not even have an office in Swan River un under this uh, new proposed uh, proposed uh, boundaries. So uh, it will be something that our people are not used to, and it'll definitely be uh, a decrease in service as far as uh, accessing our elected representatives, I think. So, anyways, and that's it for me. Okay, thank you. Uh, since the last meeting, uh, we'll go through a list of things that had the grade four some hay school do a tour of them. I have a little PowerPoint presentation I give to them. They always have interesting questions. Every group, every time, always first ask how much money does the mayor make? <laughs> 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 Not enough is the other. Um, also, um, I did tour the three medical students around. Uh, they are three young ladies uh, that are urban people. So. Maybe a little different uh, cultural thing for them also in Swan River, but it was good. I think they enjoyed themselves. Uh, the school division, uh, I think I lived most of that since 1976, so I, think I brought back a lot of memories and uh, concerns uh, about where the future is going with the declining enrollments. Uh, I attended the um, Sunday, the Manitoba Association of Friendship Centers had their annual general meeting in Swan River, so I brought greetings to the Friendship Centers. There's 12 Friendship Centers across Manitoba, and the good programs that they run in Swan River, we're fortunate to have an active group in our community. Uh, today at noon, I was at the annual general meeting of the Association of Community Living, who this is their 57th year of being in operation in the town of Swan River. Their budget is $2 million and they have 65 employees in their, in their operation. Uh, I also attended the advisory group meeting of University College of the North and there's some good things going to happen there. Uh, we had representatives from Manitoba Housing and Renewal Corporation and they're willing to rent out the empty space that they have in Bozeman and Minnetonas for students. So for example, they ran a paramedic course, maybe they can't do it because there's no place for people to stay to come and take that course. Now they'll be able to rent those buildings, uh, their space in those buildings in Minnetonas and Bolton, which is a 10 minute drive from Swan River. So that is positive. And uh, they also had uh, Manitoba Housing Renewal say that they have a program where they can uh, they can get funding for building houses, so that would work with the trades building. But right now, apparently, we've got a backlog of projects for that the trades building, so that's good. Uh, what else do I have on my list here? Oh, Thursday morning, uh, as chairman of the Health Facilities Foundation, along with the representative of the Lions Club, and I think Dr. Burnside is going to be with us. We're making our pitch to uh, Penny Gilson and a person from Shared Health uh, for a CT scanner for the Swan Valley. Health Facilities Foundation. Uh, we've got our proposal ready. Uh, I'm quite curious to see uh, what the reaction will be. I know there'll probably be some pushback from them, but I think if we look back at the history of the valley, uh, when it was uh, proposed to put dialysis in Swan River, they gave us all the kinds of reasons why we couldn't have it. We have dialysis here now. 
when it came to the uh, the surgery that we have. What is it? Facial maxillary? No, the uh, cataract. cataract surgery. Again, we were told you can't have it in Swan River. You don't have doctors won't come here. You don't have staff people won't come here. Now that's a very successful program. So I think if we persist, we have the uh, support of the Lions and the people of the Valley. We have the support of our MLA. Also, a meeting is being arranged with the Minister of Health uh, to take him up on a 2012 election promise from his party to put a CT scanner. So uh, we'll see where it goes from here. But uh, I'll report back on it after we have that meeting. And that's all that I have. Julie? spending um, a bit of time preparing for the district meeting, the AMO meeting that's coming up on Friday. We have uh, 61 people that are attending uh, as of right now. Uh, the Taylor School Choir is coming over at 9.30 in the morning to sing O Canada for us. Um, RBC is sponsoring the afternoon coffee break. And I also attended the G5 meeting last night. Uh, Didn't you have a sponsor for the morning one too? Yeah, Canada Culbert is okay. sponsoring all of the morning okay. um, breaks. And the, the executive, I found out, um, they are in Churchill uh, on Thursday, and then they're okay. coming here. Yeah. With that, I have to break away at 10 o'clock because the Manitoba High School Rodeo Finals uh, are in Swan River starting on Friday, and their opening ceremony is at 10 o'clock. So. We'll open the AMM district meeting and I'll rush over to the rodeo grounds for the opening of that. So, Councillor Delore, Delore, or one of the, I think Councillor Jacobson is not going to be here, my understanding. So may somebody not. may have to fill in for me. Okay, we'll go to bylaws and resolutions and continue. Other resolutions? The motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Fries, and resolved that Bylaw 6, 2018, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, to maintain and regulate nuisances, derelict, abandoned, and I'd cite the properties we read the first time. <coughs> Discussion? Yeah. Councillor Glory. So on, on the change, I don't actually have a problem with the change, but it's this the way that the way it read before, in the case of property that is in an unsightly condition, require the owner. Uh, if the property is a building or other structure, to remove or demolish the structure and level the site within 90 days. So the only remedy for for a structure that is in an unsightly condition is to remove or demolish it. They can't just make it sightly. Um, no, that's only if it has to come down. Like there would be an order, but no, it's it's not the only remedy. Sure. The, are you saying it reads like that? Yeah, it so reads just, like that. We just added the words oh, within. Oh, made by written order. Okay, so. Yeah. Yeah, we did. We only added the words within. Yeah, the no, I, I always let worry about overzealous officials. So, um, okay, as long as the word "may" is there. Any other discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Fries, and resolved that Bylaw 7, 2018, being a bylaw of the town of Swan River, to establish and operate an emergency firefighting service for fire prevention, for the related regulation of fire and other hazards, and for the adoption of the fire code be read at first time. Discussion? Councillor yeah. Delore. So I, I understand we're doing both of these so that they're, they're in harmony with one another. Um, and they're going down from 120 down to 90? Number of days? Is it, did it used to read 120? No, no, it didn't. It didn't have any time period in there. So it's nine, 90 seems like a long time. Could, could we? Could, does it have to be 90? Um. I mean, if we got a, a burnt out house that's not getting demolished. Right. Well, we we met and um, me and Darren, Darren Fedorchuk and, and Cocott and Ronald Wiki and and just talking over the different scenarios and the two buildings that we're dealing with right now, we felt that 90 days would be a fair amount of time to get them to to be able to um, to do the demo on their own, like to hire somebody and make the arrangements and stuff. I think that's a pretty generous amount of time to have a burnt out eyesore sitting there. So. Yeah. 
yeah, we, we just felt that sometimes it is hard to find a contractor that will, you know, that will do it for you, never mind if you're yeah. only going to give them a short period of time. Okay. Well, that's fine. At, the, at the same time, perhaps the person whose house is burned down is going to go through lawyers, litigation, financing. It might be a short time for that mm -hmm. person. Yeah. And this is 90 days from the order. That's right. So yeah. maybe even longer than that from the actual incident. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good point. Yeah. Okay. All in favor of the resolution? Motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Friesen. Resolve the accounts as followed, but hereby approved for payment. General accounts in check 22483 to 22588 for a total of 1,090,137.13. And payroll accounts in check 42525 to 4234, total of 112,021.43. Questions to Julie on any of the checks? Councillor Morio. Um, it's check, I guess check number 22560, and I guess it's probably Derek, where it says North, North Heart Engineered Sales with submersible pump at water plant pump replaces that. That's our bypass pumps, motors, and uh, VMDs. Okay. For, to bypass the pump. <clears throat> All in favor? Oh. Councilor Delorean. 22486 Liddell for the uh, Sixth Avenue lift station. Is that their final payment? No, they're okay. still able to back. Okay, great. Councillor Friesen. Lady, is that our Christine? Lady? Yeah. Thank you. All in favor? The motion moved by Councillor White, second by <coughs> Councillor Friesen, to resolve that the Swan Valley Historical Museum financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2017, be received. Discussion? All in favor? Motion moved by Councillor White, second to Councillor Friesen, resolve the Swan Valley Historical Museum Inc. annual grant in the amount of $4,000 be approved for payment. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor White, resolve the Swan Valley Regional Initiative for a Strong Economy financial statements for the year ended December 31st, 2017, be received. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor White, resulted in financial statements for the four months ending April 30th, 2018, be adopted as received. Are those our own financial statements? Yes. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? Okay. The motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Friesen, resolved that Jared Muller be permitted to move the house referenced in the attached Schedule A to the lot at 310 13th Avenue South. Discussion? It's gone through all the investigation. All in favor? The motion moved by Councillor Morris, second by Councillor Friesen, resolved that uh, somebody attend the EMO Public Information Officer Media Training Course held in Brandon June 27th and June 28th. Anybody interested in going? If not, I have to attend. Was it Councillor? Private Councillor Jacobson. Okay. Oh. Okay. Go on the Let me take a look and I'll get back to you. Okay. Can you put them on and then? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can put all three of you on there and then. Confirm. If Councillor Jacobson's going there, I can. All in favor? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor Morial, second by Councillor Friesen, resolved that Sean Kirkpatrick be hired as a Recreation Department's 
Park Summer Student Effect of July 3rd, 2018. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Motion moved by Councilor Memorial, second by Councilor White. This all the following building permit applications be received. Richard Lolt Fence, $7,000. Brooke Burek Deck, $3,000. Aaron McKay House and Garage, $160,000. Darren McKay, 309 13th Avenue South House and Garage, $160,000. Leanne Walls Fence, $3,610. Jennifer DeBruin, Patio Fence, $7,500. Brian Matthews Sign, $1,500. Julian Cotton Shed, $2,000. Jonathan Kozolowski Fence, $2,800. Riverview Condors and Suites Gazebo and Fire Pit, $5,000. Chris Friesen Demo, no cost. Uh, Eileen Haddikin, Fence mm -hmm. and Sidewalk, $8,500. Marilyn Deloria Shed, $4,000. Ashley Fedorchuk Fence, $2,000. Mervyn Fedorchuk Shed, $2,500. Brett Church Fence, $7,000. Kelly Parsons Fence, $2,000. Kevin Fisher Renovations, $25,000. Lisa Mahan Shed, $6,500. NJS Holdings Limited uh, Renovation, $200,000. Derwin Taylor Fence, $50. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Mori, resolved that Councillors Deloria, Jacobson, Mori, and White receive their full day per diem rate and dinner meal allowance June 18th, 19th, and 20th while representing the town during negotiations with QP Local 851. Discussion? All in favor? Chair. <laughs> Abstain. <laughs> Motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Mora, resolve the Northwest Regional Library 2018 heavy in the amount of 82700 be approved for payment. Discussion. Councillor Mora. Is that a different number than what we <coughs> uh, agreed to at the last meeting? Yeah, that's the amount that's that we That's the number we had figured out? Okay. No. All in favor? Motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Moore, was all the following accounts receivable invoice be written off as uncollectible. Uh, a breakfast club on September 30, 2017, $382.50. Uh, breakfast club November 3rd, 2017, $360. I have no idea what it is even. What is that? So it was Ice Rentals, and the breakfast club was created by a staff leader's assistant coach who's gone now. Mm -hmm. So we, we have been unable to collect for those. But it, so it wasn't through the staff leaders? No, it was separate. It was a from separate, the staff? yeah. We had created a separate. So, so what, what program. like it was ice time mm -hmm. for, for, for anybody that wanted to show up? Yeah, for kids. For kids? Yeah. So, and it wasn't through minor hockey? It was just. It was, it was, I was told it was done through the assistant coach who is no longer here. I think in the future we'd be sure that it's associated with the with the hockey club or minor hockey or somebody like that. If we do that kind of thing again, constantly mm -hmm. sound. So who approved them or who allowed them? Like that. Well, anybody, anybody can rent anybody the arena, can. right? Yeah. So and then they just choose not to pay. Yeah. So the bill isn't for the breakfast club. It's whoever the the guy that rented it, whoever the assistant coach was. I don't yeah. know who that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's right. moved. He's moved out of town now, so we haven't been unable to collect it from him. <coughs> Do we know who he is? Can we send this to collections? Okay. It's under collections. So that's a significant amount. So. Or Do we still want us to what it's uncollectible, or just no? Can we not contact the coach and find out where he is? I'm sure they've. He'll know where he is. Try to contact him. Um, yeah, if you want to defeat that resolution, then we can. Okay. Send her collections, even if we get to half of it. Okay. All in favor? Opposed? Yeah, I'm not in favor. Defeated. It just seems odd that. Oh, you put a proof. Oh, no, you could be. Sorry. 
It seems odd that this isn't a so part of the Stampeders. How could the Stampeders assistant coach do something without the approval of the Stampeders? Like it just seems like a little bit of a. I don't know. The motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Morito, resolved that the annual grant of $1,000 to the Swan Valley Swan River Association for Community Living be approved for payment. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. The motion moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Morito, resolved pursuant to Section 152.3 of the Municipal Act. Council go into the committee and post the meeting to the public. Oh, I thought the uh, the attached email on 9.11 was a separate item, and I was waiting for it to come up, and I wanted to make a comment on it. But can I go back on which one? On 9.11. The library. The library. Okay. Well, the, they sent us an email saying that it was less than last year. But can we look into that? Because by my calculation, we paid uh, 78,259 divided by 300. 3,907 people means we paid $20.03 per capita last year, and this year we're paying 82,700 divided by 4,014 people, we're paying $20.60 per capita. So I don't get how they're saying, which is a 3% increase, which is more of an increase than we had originally said. What did you say last year was? Please? Last year was 78,259 divided by 3,907. This year is which equals, which equals twenty dollars and three cents. Twenty one twenty three. Well, how do they figure that then? No, per capita last year was twenty one twenty three. Yeah. How do I don't? We only gave them seven seventy eight two fifty nine. So I, I'm not, and I'm not saying maybe they have, maybe they're seeing something that I'm not, but it's. Well, I'm just going by Kathy's. No. Well, based on the, what their budget was last year, if they went by the per capita, we, we maybe, gave them an increase. Yeah, like that would be the Maybe have the old population, old population numbers or something. Well, the, right. last yeah. year we were going by the old population yeah. numbers. This year is the is the 2016 census. And this year it comes to twenty fifty eight, right? Twenty dollars and sixty cents, which is a three percent increase over what we gave last year. So, for the so we we aren't short we're shorting them less than we gave them an increase so i'd like to clarification because i don't want people going around saying that we decreased the library's funding on a per capita basis because we did not so i guess if when it's uh, when it's appropriate i know there's other issues yeah. going on there if you could uh get yeah, some we better get kathy anyway mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's no rush i mean yeah. Yeah, this week could be a bad week all in favor of going into town? Carried. 